Hey guys, how are you doing? It's 8-Bit Eric, and just not too long ago, we had the Nintendo Direct that had a bunch of huge announcements, including one that I'm actually really excited about that has actually been quite a polarizing topic. That is Skyward Sword HD coming to the Nintendo Switch. For the longest time, I was like, uh, I don't think that's ever going to be brought to the Switch because I felt the motion controls behind it were just too advanced, funny enough, even though it's from the Wii, for the Joy-Con to replicate because it was using a Wii Motion Plus. I thought there was a lot of issues that Nintendo would have to iron out in order to get this game to properly play, but now they're bringing Skyward Sword with enhanced visuals, um, a new control layout because you're not using a Wii remote anymore, and it's been quite some time since I've played it. I would honestly say since it came out, I think I played it for about a week, completed the game, and never went back to it. As far as a Zelda game goes, it's not the best, but it's not the worst. I think it gets a lot of flack, mostly because it was a motion control based game. Um, a lot of people don't like that gimmick. But as far as its standing and story, like the plot and where it is on the Zelda timeline, I actually like it a lot. It sure didn't have the best open world map. The open world map on this game was actually kind of quite linear, to be honest. It didn't really have a big exploration feel. Uh, it was very different compared to Wind Waker or Twilight or even Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. At the time, it was almost like Nintendo was doing something experimental with Skyward Sword. Uh, it did have a good cast, though. It had Impa. It had uh, Goose, and it had Zelda and Link and a few other characters. I think a lot of the NPCs that were featured in Skyward Sword were uh, really well done. A lot of them had different personalities. They were really quirky. There was a lot of fun dialogue. The music was amazing on Skyward Sword because it was all orchestra-based. This is when Nintendo started to make um, orchestral like symphony music for their games. So it had some, you know, aspirations behind it, but it was just kind of, um, I guess, underappreciated and, and underrated throughout the years because of the whole motion control gimmick and the fact that it was on the Nintendo Wii. Um, I do recall some of the best boss battles I've ever played on Legend of Zelda games were on there. For example, the boss battle that's on like the ghost ship, the pirate ship that you get on. That one was a lot of fun, in my opinion. And there's some interesting gameplay mechanics involving the um, the, uh, the, the power-ups and stuff that you use in this game. I think there was a lot of features and mechanics that crossed over into Breath of the Wild. And, and for the most part, you know what? I'm looking forward to playing it. Now the question is, is this game worth paying a full retail price on? A lot of people are like, dude, the game's over 10 years old. Why is Nintendo putting this up? for 60 bucks. Nintendo is like Walt Disney. They're going to put stuff out of the vault for full retail. People are going to buy it. Does it is it kind of crappy that Nintendo first party games never go on sale or discounted at a, a lethal uh, like a hefty hefty price? Yeah, it sucks at times. Uh, but me personally, I'm willing to pay another 60 for Skyward Sword, which speaking of sales and prices for Skyward Sword. This news is a few days old. Skyward Sword HD tops the bestseller chart on Amazon. And this was just for pre-orders. This It's not even out yet. And this is how well it is doing. So we're going to look at this article. This is from Nintendo Life. And you can see they have already had some huge success. So this comes out in July. Which is uh, my birthday month by the way. A week or two after my birthday this will be out. So this did have pre-orders already available on Amazon for $59.99. Nintendo's website's also doing digital pre-orders for the same price. Me, I'm probably just going to pick it up at Walmart. Walmart tends to have these for $49.99, which is $10 cheaper. So the original article says, Skyward Sword might not necessarily be everyone's cup of tea, but that hasn't stopped the recently announced Switch HD version from soaring to the top of the charts on Amazon. So on the US webpage, it is currently the top best selling video game, and in the UK, it's still in the top 10. So that is actually really good. I think that just goes to show how powerful of a brand 
Legend of Zelda can be. Now, I'm going to be honest. Um, I didn't expect it to do that good. To be the number one bestseller on Amazon. Uh, I don't even think... I think 3D All-Stars hit that. But I don't think Mario 3D World featuring Bowser's Fury hit number one. If I'm not mistaken, I don't think that hit number one. Um, 3D All-Stars sold 8 million units last time I checked. So... Skyward Sword could easily get right there as well. It could hit 8 million sold units as well, which is a good number. Um, top 10 in the UK, that's respectable. So good on them. It shows that Zelda games are much wanted. So it says Skyward Sword HD will launch on the Switch July 16th. Nintendo is also releasing a special set of Joy-Con based on the Master Sword and Highland Shield, which I haven't gotten that. Um, I think that is actually going to be hard to find. Very limited quantities. I missed out on that. So I am definitely going to have to uh, try to pick up a pair of the Joy-Cons for me. Because Zelda is and always has been my most favorite franchise in gaming. I, I absolutely adore Legend of Zelda. I had so many memories growing up playing it. I'm not too good at the NES games. But, you know, Link to the Past on, I've beaten every Zelda game. Um... I am a little disappointed, and I touched on this lightly on my Nintendo Direct video recap. I am slightly disappointed that Nintendo chose to not really announce anything with the Zelda anniversary, but I'm not giving hope. There's a whole bunch of people out there saying Nintendo forgot about the anniversary or they ignored it. No, I think what they wanted is they want... I mean, technically, it's the 35th anniversary no matter what once the date hits for a full year. So I would say... Nintendo is going to wait for a standalone Zelda Direct and to drop some heavy announcements. That way, you know, the Smash Brothers announcement that they made, um, the announcement with Splatoon 3, and the announcement with some of the other games don't get in the way of the Zelda anniversary hype. You know, like Mario 35th anniversary had its own Direct. Um, I think they're going to do that with Legend of Zelda. So I'm still expecting some Zelda news. Uh, I would like a, a Nintendo Game & Watch with Legend of Zelda, like how they had for Super Mario Brothers. I would also like a collection, like uh, Ocarina, Twilight, and Wind Waker. I feel that those three are some of the most influ influential titles of the Zelda franchise. They split the timeline into three different segments. Um, I feel that they would be the best. And then, of course, maybe like a Majora's Mask port or something like that. We got the Skyward Sword port. Uh, kind of like how Mario 35th had the 3D All-Stars collection plus 3D World separate. I think we're going to see some special stuff. Maybe a lot of merch, a lot of clothes and things. But good on Skyward Sword. Hopefully this shows Nintendo that we demand Zelda-related games. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below, guys. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Thanks a lot for watching as always. I'll see you on the next one.